My final round on my tour with my dad was at Royal Ratchaburi. We were both a little worse for wear after the week-long trip, so I wasn't sure if I was going to play in the heat again. But then I saw the opening hole, and I had to see where it went. Plus, this course had the cutest reception staff of all the courses I had played. The first three holes were quite rushed, as I was squeezed into a field of Korean tour group members. The first few holes were a blur, and commentary picks up on hole 4. But as a general rule, try get to the course 40 minutes before your tea time. As a student, I would be on the tee with 30 seconds to go, bowl of oats in hand, and then hit the first tee shot without warming up. A major part of stress-free golf, unspoken thus far, is the need to never rush. Pay for your round, put your stuff in your locker, go take a dump. Have a coffee, hit some two-foot putts, and then get those limbs warm. Once you've finished the round, pack everything into the bag where it should go. Then put the bag nice and complete into the car. Don't throw your stuff all over the back of the car. That's high stress. Walk back to the clubhouse and take a nice shower and have a relaxing beer. If you must rush off, rather rush off immediately. Don't have a rush beer with the guys. They'll understand, but never miss the ritual of packing your stuff away, stress-free, unhurried. Throwing your stuff in the back of the car will start the next practice session and round in high stress mode. I hope that was nice and calm. I feel like it is. I feel quite relaxed now. Long holes intimidate us for one reason. We're scared we won't make par. We become par obsessed. Let's say you play off a 10 handicap. You have 10 strokes to lose around the course. If you add one to the par of the hole and turn the par three into a par four, the par four into a par five, and the par five into a par six, you'll find a new level of joy. Once you accept that not making a par is a decent score on that hole, you'll replace pressure with pleasure and you'll start making more birdies and pars on them. Much like planting feathers grows birdies, adding one to par breeds more beautiful birdies. A true test of commitment is a shot over water to an island green. Measure the distance to carry the treble and then hit it with a club that will clear that with a poor strike. But don't steer it like I did. I was only 90% committed.
Notice how I stopped my follow through on this. I was between clubs and took one more and thought I'd go easy on it, but I don't know how to play that shot. If you prefer soft three quarter swings, use them. If you don't like those, then use the extra club and go firmer. Play your game. Do better than me. If there was water short of the green, I would lay up. Since there were only bunkers, I liked my chances with a miss left, or right, or short. Wide fairways make my mind stray to the worst thought you could have. Oh, it's so wide, I can hit it anywhere. Look at the swing I put on this one. Narrow your focus down to a specific area on wide open holes and hit it there. Taking the, it's so wide, I can hit it anywhere. Root lacks the fundamental of a golf shot. Commitment. Sometimes you want to experiment on the course. You must accept that there will be screw ups. I wasn't mentally prepared for the misses with my fancy attempts at fades, which I'm not very good at. Notice the grain. The parts of the green that are shiny are where you are hitting the ball down the grain, which makes the putt much quicker. The dark patches mean it's into the grain where the putt will be slower. I noticed my par 5 layups are often with the wrong club, so I used one more this time and committed to the shot. I like this tactic to stop us from leaving too long a shot into the green after a botched layup. When you have a slope and then a flat part where the pin is, you have two options. Option one is to bump and run it like I prefer and my choice of shot. Option two is the pitch shot to the top of the slope where you carry most of the slope and take it out of the equation. I can't do option two because I never play that shot, but keep it in mind for yourself. Come on now, you know it's now hole 12, 
No, hole 13. 13 or 14. No, no screwing up. Come on. Loose at that bunker on the right of the green with a little draw. Perfect. Let's go draw style, okay? Draw style. Not bad. I'm going to need to work on my partial shots or just start hitting committed shorter clubs. Here's the difference between a shot hit at the ball and a shot hit through the ball. One ends up tugged to the left and a tricky putt. The other ends up eight feet from the pin. Which one do you think is more reliable?